Welcome, glad to have you here. This is a first look at the Autel IRPC software application tool. Now, the software application tool is designed to be Autel's answer to FLIR tools. Let's be clear right up front, this is no FLIR tools. It doesn't even come close to what FLIR tools does. It's pretty clumsy by comparison, but it does give us some access to information that is coming from the Autel 640T radiometric camera system. Now this cannot be used, or this tool cannot be used with data that's captured with your Autel EVO 2 Dual. This only works with data that is coming from the Autel EVO 2 640T, which is the thermal 8K camera combination that um, is ma manufactured entirely in China. Now the 640T has got a fully radiometric camera on it, which means that we are capable of reading temperature data from that camera image. So without any further comment, let's dive right into the IRPC software tool. So this is the IRPC software tool, and uh, you can see it's fairly minimalist in its overall use. The first thing that we're gonna want to be able to do is go in and import a JPEG. So we're gonna go to the upper right hand corner and click import JPEG. And then we're gonna go select an image. So I think we'll, we'll try one of these images here that are coming from uh, my swimming pool in the backyard. So let's notice first off, let, let's work with this one. This is a white hot image. So the image as captured on the camera was captured in white hot. And when we import it, it just by chance happens to come in in the last known profile that I was using. So it comes in with rainbow. So the first thing we want to do is transfer this back or convert this back to what it was. So we're going to come down here to the lower left hand corner at the very bottom and choose change color palette. Okay, and we're going to slide up here and choose the white hot palette and there we go. Now we're back to matching the image that we had. Now this application is a little bit backwards. It's got most of the workspace on the right hand side versus the left hand side. First of all, the units are set up in Celsius, which is how thermal data is natively written and read. However, you might have need to convert this to Kelvin or to Fahrenheit. We're gonna leave it in Celsius for the time being. We're gonna leave our reflective temperature alone and our atmospheric temperature alone and our transmissivity alone. Our emissivity is set by default to 0.95 and this is generally where we're going to want it to be. Okay, so we can, can click and read that data again from the the uh, camera and sure enough everything comes back up exactly the way it was. So now let's look at what we can do with the image. Over here we have our temperature measurement tools and marking tools and up here we have the ability to provide transforms or change the angles of the camera. So for example if I wanted to flip this image horizontally we'll click the horizontal flip. Uh, if we want to flip it vertically we'll flip it vertically and then come back up here to the top and choose uh, what Autel has labeled image does not flip. I think their programmers could probably use some translation support right there. And then we, uh, this, this bottom key, it says flip image di uh, diagonally. It actually doesn't flip the image diagonally. It's only flipping the image vertically at this point. So it looks like they've got some work to do there. So let's get back to it. So the first thing that we'll click on is we'll click on the pointer. We click on the pointer, it lights up orange. As we drag our cursor, across any part of the screen, we're now starting to see a variety of different temperature data that's coming up. Now, if these temperatures don't look quite wide enough for you, well, we're ranging 18.9 Celsius to say 20.6 Celsius, we'll convert these over to Fahrenheit. And that might be a little bit more viable. So for example, if we come down here and look at the water, it's showing the water 69.2 degrees. Uh, we'll see some reflections that are showing a, a slightly different temperature, but when we work in, in the actual water itself, away from the reflections, we're seeing a more accurate temperature reading. Now, these temperatures are pretty well right. Today is a great day for me to have captured these images because it is an entirely cloudy day. It's fairly cold. The outdoor ambient temperature is sitting right around 71 degrees. So everything that we're looking at is falling into those different ranges. So there's nothing that is marked as we're working across the screen here. Uh, it will only become marked when we start selecting some of the different measurement tools out here. But before I do that, I want to make these uh, numbers, the displayed numbers, be larger. So we're gonna come down here, we're gonna click on the, the middle 
choice there and you can see immediately that's making my numbers just a little bit larger. So now let's go through and start applying some temperatures. So we're going to come over here to set a measurement point and let's start by clicking on the solar reflector in this uh, chlorine dispenser. It shows that it's 70.6 and there we go we've got a, a numeric value there. Now you notice it reverted back to our pointer or to our cursor so nothing is going to stick again until we click on the spot measurement tool. So I want to see what's happening uh, up here at the base of the sprinkler system and this is showing that it's at 64.1 uh, degrees because of the fact that it's underneath some trees, it's wet underneath there, so it's bound to be cooler than what we have in the, uh, the solar collector on that dispenser ball. Then what we might want to do is measure a range of temperatures over an area. Now Autel calls these isotherms. They're not true isotherms, but it's the term that Autel has given to them. So once we click on this particular icon here, and we come over, we'll, we'll draw a blend between the concrete and the water, it's going to take that data and average it out. And so we can see we've got a maximum temperature here of 70.4, a minimum temperature of 67.5, giving us an average of 69 degrees overall. We can see the cold is indicated with that uh, down blue triangle, and the warm is indicated with the uh, upward facing red triangle. So this gives us an idea of, of what we're facing overall here. Now we have some other tools that are available as well. If we wanted to measure a specific area, so for example, maybe I want to measure the temperature along this line. So this is a, an aluminum pole that I've laid into place there. And we can see that across that pole, we're seeing very little difference in the median temperature. We can see it's on the, uh, the cold side, it's 62.1. On, on the warm side, it's 64.1 with an average of 63.4. That's not much of a temperature swing across these two levels. And in fact, we can see this higher piece up here um, is a little colder because it's under a tree where this, uh, the warmer temperature that we see down here is a little bit more exposed to the, the, uh, the ground where it's slightly warmer overall. So these are some of the things that we can use to go through and measure these temperatures. Next, we have the ability to look at an entire frame. So when we click on this entire frame switch, it's giving us data. So at the coldest point in this image, it's 41.4 degrees. At the warmest, it's 71.7 with an average of 67 degrees across the board. So we've you know, got some different data there that we can pop up and, and have a look at. There's our center temperature right here. Again, upper, you know, lower. So one of the things we can use is use this to, to identify if our camera is properly calibrated. Uh, if we've reset that to zero, uh, this should match with the center temperature that's seen in a screenshot or seen on the screen from our, our drone overall. Let's turn that off. And now we can also move measurement positions around. So for example, we come down here, maybe I didn't quite hit that exactly where I wanted to. So I want to move it to a new location. So we just click on this section right here and again this allows us to move that temperature point around. And that should lock in right there but every now and again it gets a little bit freaky and the software just crashed. Okay, now all of our numbers have reset just simply because the software crashed. One thing that I'll tell you is this first generation software is just a little bit buggy. So let's go through and set a couple of our temperatures again real quickly here. And we're going to change up our size. There we go. And grab one or two more temperature points down here that we just like we had before. We're going to convert those back up to Fahrenheit. Okay, yeah, everything's looking really good. And let's set up our, our measurement across a line here. So let's go ahead and grab our, our aluminum pole. Great. And then we're seeing our, our number of values that are set up right there. Excellent. So now we've, we've set up some of these different pieces. We can, again, as I mentioned, we can go move some of these around and identify exactly where it is that we meant to place that particular temperature. There we go. So I've, I've moved that temperature. So when we start getting to this level, the software currently is buggy. It seems like when we get more than three or four temperatures on here or we try to mix uh, different activities in the software, it's a little bit buggy. 
So just be aware of that and you know, maybe take some screenshots or export some reports, etc. There's nothing to save here. There's just exporting reports per image. So we'll look at that in, in just another second here. But again, be aware as you're bouncing through some of these different looks and styles that it's quite possible the software will, will just flip out and, and crash on you. Okay, so again, we've already gone through and we've changed our palette. Now let's switch back to some of the other palettes that we get to choose from. Now these palettes are not part of the, the FLIR palette system. This is something that Autel has created on their own. So we have a broad variety of different ways of illustrating or displaying these palettes. So we can go to a, you know, a, a black hot or to a white hot, uh, different gradients that are here. Uh, one thing that's important to know is that virtually all the palettes that are found in different thermal cameras stem from the black hot, white hot, and all they're doing is giving us different gradients through which we can view these images. So they're basically just filters that are laid on top of that black hot, white hot data that we're, we're working with. So you're not doing uh, any destructive editing here at all to your image. And in fact, we can export these images as we see them, or we can export them in their native flavor uh, when we go out to a CSV or to a Word file. So let's dive in just a little further. Okay, we can change measurement colors if we want to. Uh, so currently we've got these set to white, but maybe you've got some areas that you need to work over top of. So we'll, we'll change these up and change them, to, for example, in this case to yellow. And this may show up a little better against a particular palette. For example, here in Black Hawk, White Hot, uh, we're able to change so that this is a little bit more readily available. So now let's imagine we need to output this data to a client. We're going to go up here to uh, the W here and export a test report. It's going to ask, ask us where we want to, to save it. So we'll call this pool report 2 and save. And that pool report will take just a second to save. You can see their test report generated successfully. We'll come down here, go to our, our, uh, our Explorer. And let's go in here and open up our pool uh, report 2. And this is what we're getting out of that information there. So it does come up and gives us Autel Robotics. Uh, it is putting some information in here that you're probably going to want to go in and, and edit because this is not something that we uh, likely want our customers to see. So this is a header file. So we're going to go up, in, up to view. And in view, we're going to choose our headers. Or we can just simply uh, double click right here. And this allows us to change this up so that it says Sundance Media Group. Or we can set this up so that it says Cooker Rankin Inc. And then uh, insert an address and, and phone number as we need to, or simply delete that as we need to. So that's all there is to it. And we've now got you know an output from our file. There's not a lot of not a lot of uh, information that's there, but it does show us what our test environment looks like and it allows us to export this. So we can do this per image that we would import into a book and send off to our client. So hopefully this gives you a really fast view of what the IRPC tool is capable of doing. We're very, very hopeful that Autel will continue to develop this tool so that it becomes even more useful for us. It's certainly a, a great step in the right direction on the part of Autel Robotics. So until next time, check us out at krinc.net. That's krinc.net uh, for more tips and, and tricks that you can apply with your unmanned aircraft in the AEC or the inspection or law enforcement public safety environments. Until next time, I'm Douglas Spotter. Thanks for watching.